everybody welcome back so doing a little bit different approach on this one as you can see um, I've got both of these SKS's fully disassembled of course this one on the top is my Chinese SKS one on the bottom is my Romanian mutt SKS I'll call it um, you know I just decided to go ahead and just take this apart off camera save you guys the trouble of sitting there and being like oh my god when is he gonna get to it um, because quite frankly um, I did film that initially and you know it was a pain in the butt getting this one apart um, because I forget I forgot that the piston slides back and forth in there and sometimes wants to get hung up so anyway um, what did I find out alright so we're gonna start sorry we're gonna start with the Romanian mutt as I like to call it because it is a mixed master of parts um, and we'll start with the stock. So you notice the stock here is kind of busted on the end. Of course, if you saw us previously, you know that the butt plate is heavily worn. This trap door is functional, um, but because of how this butt plate is put on here, um, I had to take this completely off. The trap door does work. Of course, your butt plate is sort of shot there. I know James did include a new one um, in my bag of parts, but I likely will not be uh, using this stock simply because of the shape that it's in I will likely be using this one that I got off of eBay which is in much better shape same exact inlet um, also made for the blade style bayonet the only consequence to this one is if you look closely right here there is a crack um, that needs to be probably filled with glue and clamped uh, just to prevent any further issues or either drilled with a dowel inserted and then glued uh, just to keep me or just to keep this from having any further issues in the future um, this one does have a functional trap door it works quite well no issues there we're gonna go ahead and set these socks stocks aside so we can take a closer look at this Romanian-esque um, SKS here so I got my uh, upper handguard off. Um, as you can see, it's really not in bad shape. It's got some cosmoline on it. You know, no really major rust areas. You can just kind of tell it's pretty heavily worn. Well loved, well used, whatever you want to call it. Of course, there is our gas piston, which actually looks pretty nice. Um, probably not the original might be I don't know um, really no way for me to tell um, we'll take a look at the take a quick look at the magazine of course you did notice in that previous video this magazine was kind of kind of beat on a little bit um, numbers of course do not match it's kind of beat on right here but I still think it's functional um, internally the magazine looks good you know, some of your typical wear marks nothing to really be concerned about interestingly enough there's you right there letter U. Um, is there anything else interesting on this magazine? Probably won't know unless I get the rest of this tape or whatever that is right there off of it. Um, not certain just because I don't know a whole lot about these SKS's. Uh, Triangle 26 if you're watching hoping you can weigh in on this. So we're gonna set that aside. We're gonna set this aside. Let's look at the other components of this SKS. Now, I stated previously that this, you know, this trigger pack, or that at least the safety on this trigger pack was very interesting. Um, of course, this has a Papa Sierra 0202 number on it. Once again, it does have a U here. I don't know what these U's are. Um, there's another U back here. <laughs> I don't have a clue. There's a U marked on the hammer. Um, I'm really, really hoping Triangle 26 will weigh in on this because I don't know what I'm looking at. I did notice, as you guys, as I told you guys previously, when you look at this safety, it's it's ribbed um, on both sides, front and back. I've never seen a safety like that. Um, of course, once again, this is going to take some work to get this uh, safety functioning properly. Um, it's just part of this project. It is a project. It is not ready to rock right out of the box. That's not what I expect. I enjoy projects like these, um, as I'm sure some of you guys do too. So let's go ahead 
and if I can take this uh, bolt out bolt bolt carrier spring now as I told you guys previously wow helps if you get the bolt as I told you guys previously this bolt does have some rust on it it'll need to be completely disassembled cleaned up lubed um, of course it does not match um, I went through kind of what matched what didn't match my suspicion here is is that this is a Yugoslavian bolt and bolt carrier simply because of how um, I've seen them mark their bolt carriers in the past with a 0 00022 um, does appear that is a 8131 this is a 99400 you know, not, these they still match. I um, don't really know what to say about them. Don't know much about them. Um, appear to be in decent shape, functioning shape. Of course, firing pin moves back and forth. No worries there. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'm thinking this is a mixed master because this doesn't make sense to me for a Romanian SKS. Um, let me get this bayonet extended. So we can take a look at under the wood condition. Of course, you can see this is a long lug. Uh, if you reference some of Triangle 26's videos, he goes into great detail um, about long and short lug and pin barrels and all that cool stuff. Very good resource. A little bit of rust down in there, nothing terrible. Let's go back over it on this side. You will see a circle and a K and a circle and a K on both the lug and the receiver there. Not really sure what that signifies, but it's on both of them, so I guess that's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, looks nice. And I might have been wrong on the bore on this one. Let me look at it off camera. I thought it, initially it was chrome lined, but now... I don't believe that to be the case. I don't think this is a chrome line board. It's, it's kind of dark. I don't see the nice, the nice uh, chrome ring right here at the chamber. So I'm not sure. Um, I don't think it's chrome line though. I think this more closely resembles the Yugoslavian uh, SKS in that regard. But anyway, you know, just a little bit of minor pitting, as you guys saw when I was kind of going over this, but. Actually, it's not even really pitting, it's just some minor rust. Um, I don't really see any heavy pitting. There's probably some more rust right there. But it looks great. I mean, safety is fully functional. Got some cosling caked on it there. And yeah, it does work like it's supposed to, albeit probably well loved, which is okay. So let me try to set this aside without making too big of a mess and destroying too many things and knocking too much over. So let's set all this stuff up to the top and then let's take a closer look at the Chinese SKS. Now I told you in a previous video the Chinese SKS looked to be in far better condition um, and it was nearly all numbers matching and condition under the look, wood looks very good. So here's our upper handguard. Um, you, know, you can see some cosling caked in there. I mean, I've got no complaints about that whatsoever. Actually, the, the wood on the upper handguard is in pretty good shape, all things considered. Of course, there's your gas piston. You know, typical standard fare, nothing wrong there from what I can tell. It doesn't appear to be warped or bent. I said warped, I meant bent. Um, now the magazine looks remarkably nice. A um, little bit of typical wear in your usual places, but on all, bluing is just about spot on and perfect. Looks really nice. Functions, of course, like it should. YouTube, this is a 10 round magazine. Previous one I, shown, I showed, 10 round magazine. No violation of policies here. So. That looks good. I mean, it looks really good. Much better than the other one. Um, 
The trigger pack, I suspect, was not the original, merely because the number did not match the rifle. Um, it is a little bit worse for wear in terms of rust, in terms of just general gunk. Stuff that's got to be cleaned off of it. Everything's here except for the safety, so I gotta, you know, obviously gotta take one of those safeties that, uh, that James included in there and fit it to this as well as clean it up. It's just gonna be part of the refurb process. But as always, I feel like I wanna give you guys as much information as possible, show you as much as possible so you guys are as well informed as possible. So, there's our trigger group. Let's set that aside, or fire control group, whatever you call it. Let's go ahead. Let's take this top part off. Get the bolt carrier, the bolt, recoil spring, all that good stuff out of here. But you guys, uh, you guys saw all this previously, so I'm not gonna, you know, beat a dead horse about it. Other than the fact that. You know, this, this bolt and this carrier do match the, re the receiver here, which is a huge plus. I've got no complaints about that. So, once again, go back and reference that previous video if you want to see this in great detail. I'm just not going to recover it here. Um, however, this had a lot of cosmoline on the top side of that barrel, and that's what preserved it, even in the handguard cap there. So let's do just a quick once over. Once again, just a lot of cosmoline caked on there. Bluing looks excellent. There's even cosmoline back here. That is not rust. Look at that. Look at those machining marks. I don't know how well you guys can see them on the camera. Just a really, really nice looking SKS. Once again, a whole bunch of cosmoline caked on there. Now I did notice this when I took it apart. There is a 29 on the extension there, and there's a 29 on the receiver there. Yes, I know this is a factory 26, Arsenal 26. I'm guessing that's some sort of inspection mark after these were mated together. But as you can see, that nice chrome ring there around the bore, wonderful chrome line looking, or wonderful looking chrome line barrel. Um, you know, no complaints here whatsoever. Um, now that site works great, as it should. Um, there's just a lot of grease and cosmoline that's got to be cleaned out of it. You guys can see that. It's all over it. That stuff doesn't worry me. That preserves the rifle very well. As always, and I implore you guys, anytime you get any mill serps like these, always check your headspace. Invest in a set of headspace gauges. Find a buddy that has some, gunsmith, whatever. Ask them to check it for you. They'll check it. Um, make sure you trust them. Uh, so they don't try to, you know, scam you and say, well, you need all this work done. But anyway, one of the things I thought was kind of cool when I took this apart, and I took the, it was when I took the handguard off of the Romanian one, was this kind of fell out. And that says HK91-93 something. I have no idea what that is. Could be an old Hunter's Lodge ad. I don't know. It was just kind of neat because it fell out of the upper handguard. Um, I don't, I don't know where it came from. Um, but by comparison to the other stock, um, this Chinese one is in much, much better shape. Um, of course, I do want to show you guys that. Look at that A there, that capital A that is stamped into the wrist. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it means. Uh, Triangle 26, maybe you do. <laughs> but I think I'm going to keep this stock on it just because it's cool looking. Take some Murphy's oil soap, clean it up good. Of course, preserve as much of these markings as possible, especially on both sides of that butt stock there. That's pretty cool. Um, just even though it's got some dings, it's got some gashes, it's got some indentions. You know, that big one right there, that doesn't affect anything. It doesn't go all the way through. It's just a pressure mark, pressure, whatever. Um, but all in all, this stock looks good. Only thing that doesn't work too well is that, as you can see there, the trap door doesn't flip all the way flush, and my receiver fell. Um, but I may tweak that, may mess with it, may just leave it alone. I don't know yet. But looks nice. I mean, this this Chinese one looks very nice, um, with very few minor parts not matching, like the trigger group, or yeah, the trigger group assembly. Um, cleaning rod looks good, 
but but on one side the threads are fine on the other side they're a little boogered up I've got a buddy that's a machinist um, I may have him chase the threads on this to clean it up good this cleaning rod might still be usable I'm hoping it is uh, just because it's likely the original um, I'd like to put it back with it if not you know I'll get a nice reproduction or get a nice mill serp one stick with it you know all SKS parts are usually a dime a dozen you know and they are usually end up being mixed together at some point in time or another now a few thoughts I think this one is a much older import more imported um, SKS um, I say that because your import mark is right here and it says CAI St. Albany but then Virginia or Vermont St. Albany Vermont SKS 7639 it's very small right there on the barrel I'll insert a picture the other one however is much larger and you can see it's right here CAI looks like Georgia Vermont made in Romania model I can't even read it but I'll insert a picture of that as well um, one of these is definitely older than the other <laughs> I don't know which I can't remember when CAI switched over their import marks but I'll insert some cool pictures of these as much as I can um, but as you can see here this is just a good example of a long lug and short lug SKS you can see the differences here. Triangle 26 also has a video where he goes into great detail on these. Help you identify your SKS, figure some things out about it. So anyway, just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, show you what you might be able to expect. Uh, once again, as always, I always state this, your mileage may vary. These were unlisted at $300 a piece. They may cost you more, they may cost you less. I do not know. Sometimes it just depends on what kind of mood James is in. What he thinks he can get away with with pricing. I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the man does. I mean, it's not like he gave me you know a super big discount. I'm like, hey, make sure you give me kudos on YouTube because he doesn't know I'm putting this on YouTube. He might. I don't know. He might have figured out who I am by now. Um, if he did, he did. But you know, this is not a promotional video. This is just saying, hey, here's my unboxing. This is what you can expect. This is what I got. So, anyway, they may have a bunch of these. They may not. I do not know. I don't know their stock status. I wish I did. I'd love to know everything that they've got. <laughs> As many of you probably would, too. So, anyway, just want to say a big thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to everyone that likes, comments, and shares on these videos. Greatly appreciate it. You guys help it out or help out this content, my channel, more than you know, more than I know, because as always, nobody understands the YouTube algorithm, including yours truly. Make sure you hit that bell notification, sign up for notifications. Anytime I do more content like this, anytime I do more unboxings, anytime I do more, you know, just general deals that are floating around out there. So until next time, everybody, thanks for watching. More content on the way, and you guys have a great day.